وباطنة ليشكروه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الذين صحبوه ونصروه إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تسب الذين يدعون من دون الله فيسب الله عدوا بغير علم كذلك زينا لكل أمة عملهم ثم إلى ربهم مرجعهم فينبئهم بما كانوا يعملون صدق الله العظيم It is very unfortunate and tragic that often Islam is misrepresented sadly at times we give momentum to the misconception due to our uncouth behavior it is our duty like I always say as Muslims to stand tall in society and to be an ambassador of the deen and if we cannot be an ambassador the least we can do is not be an obstacle and a blockage the announcement that was made now is such a sad announcement but such a real announcement that before we commence our programs we have to remind people don't obstruct park correctly I mean this is just going on and on for years and years in the authentic hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had advised the companion radiallahu anhu when he asked which is the noblest of actions and he said to liberate a slave and that can put the record correctly Islam didn't come to advocate or promote uh, slavery slavery was found Islam came to end slavery Islam came to end slavery so Islam encouraged free empower people give people life give people life of I cannot do that then tu'inu sani'an aw tasna'u li akhra tu'inu sani'an aw tasna'u li akhra then help someone who doesn't know how to do something or help someone who might be skilled also in fact Hafiz ibn Hajar has written in Fathul Bari that tu'inu uh, sani'an the Prophet sallallahu started off there akhrat means alladhi la yutqinu al-fi'l who doesn't know how to do it correctly Perhaps a person is stranded on the road, had a puncture on the side of the road, he's not so equipped, he's not so skilled. You can come there, you use a friendly, you hands on, you know what, jack his car up, open a trunk, help him, get him back onto the road quickly. Or like I say to the youth today, your dad might not be so techno savvy. Be respectful. You don't have to, ah, oh, dad, that's so silly, man. Ah, oh, that's so simple, man. Ah, oh, that's a given. No, he doesn't know. You know, some people, when they give directions, they give directions as though the person knows the place. Why would he ask you? Oh, uh, you know what? Just go straight there. There's a garage. No, I don't know there's a garage there. There's a tower there. No, I don't know. Why am I asking you if I knew? I often say to people at the airport, one act of virtue is show people. There's an old man. He doesn't know where his gate is. He doesn't know where the luggage carousel is. There's so much virtue you can do. Help the person to his boarding gate. You can get him around. I'm telling you, I'm traveling for the last 25 years. There's so much opportunity. I till today use the analogy of aviation and airports with Qiyamah. Two boarding gates adjacent next to each other. But the destinations are poles apart. You can be buried next to someone, but your abode could be totally different. You could end up in the same graveyard with a different abode. Tu'inu sani'an help someone who's skilled also. Hafiz ibn Hajar says, this actually is a greater form of assistance for innahu min babil mastur. Because this is a very concealed act of kindness. When someone shows kindness to an old man, ah, dekho kya pyara larga hai yaar. Isko kehte beta. This is so honorable, dignified, respectful. And if you're helping a young man, ah, leave him and let him flex his muscles. What's it good for? So you're not going to get much mileage and credit here. Yet you'll get the credit in the former. But the Prophet wasallam even recognizes this as an act of virtue. Only be of a life, I'm unable to do that. The kufur sharraka anil nas. Fa inna ha sadaqatun minka ala nafsik. Then just don't harm people and you will be in charity. Fihi dalilun ala anna al kaffa ala sharri dakhilun fi fi'li al insani wa kasbih. حتى يؤجر عليه ويعاقب غير أن الثواب لا يحصل مع الكف إلا مع النية والقصد لا مع الغفلة والذهول. أبز ابن حجر writes that we learn from this that Dean teaches us what did I say? Become an ambassador of the Dean. 
Become an ambassador of the deen. The manner in which you carry yourself, the manner in which you exhibit yourself, eyes are on you. I've said this, and in a world where Islamophobia is happening, and it's rife and it's common, all the more we need to understand the role in which we carry ourselves. I was in India some years ago. I was here this last year as well. But this refers to an incident that happened some time back. And I boarded a train, and then uh, we were coming from Gujarat to Mumbai. And then I just called my mum, and I was just talking to her. And of course, Islam teaches us when we speak to our parents, we speak with respect, we speak with honor, we speak with dignity. Uh, you know, the, mashallah, the name of this masjid is Isa ibn Maryam, as I understand. So, subhanallah, there's something so amazing mentioned in the tafsir, and this is mentioned in Bayan al Quran, that Allah said regarding Isa alayhi salam. وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ That Isa alayhi salam will speak to people in the crib and he'll speak to people in advanced age, in his old age. This is a verse of the Quran, right? Chapter 3, Surah Ali Imran. So the scholars say, it was a miracle to speak in the crib, in the cradle. Why did Allah say he will speak in his old age? Everybody speaks in the old age. وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ as a gahwara in the crib في الكهل in his advanced age they deduce two things from this number one Isa alayhi salam was elevated to the heavens to the heavens before old age and Allah said he will speak in his old age that means the latter portion of this ayah is an indication to his subsequent return number two his speech as a child will be so coherent and so focused and so refined just like a mature adult speaks. If a baby speaks at the age that children don't evidently speak, even if he blurts, it's like, wow. Although it, it's not grammatically constructive. You might flaw it by English grammar to say, no, th this is not a, th the grammatically this thing is flawed. But end of the day, you know what? He's two months old and he's making sounds. He's, he's constructing sentences. Grammatically, it's not correct, but he's still making a sentence. Yeah, Allah said, Isa will speak in the crib and the advanced age, meaning as a child, his speech will be so coherent. Subhanallah. So I just rang my mom up and I started speaking to my mom. I said, gee, my love, love you, my darling. Gee, mama, Allah bless you. I'm well, I'm okay. Allah is my witness. We are fasting, we are in his house. And there was a friend of mine next to me, and next to him was a non-Muslim who also boarded the train. So he nudged my friend and he said, who's this here? He said, this is my spiritual teacher and we're traveling together. He said, you know, I booked my ticket the last minute and I had to pay an arm and a leg because I to get a seat. And I was so angry and frustrated and agitated because I paid extra and it was a last minute booking and just hopped on. But I'm so grateful to God that he gave me a seat in this cabin next to you people because in my life I never heard someone speak so respectful to their parent like this man. There's nothing of mine. I, I keep on saying to today the, the celebrity world is so dominated by evil culture that if a person becomes a celebrity and all he says be good to your parents. Wow, did you hear what he said? You all know what I'm talking about. Wow, look after your parents. I mean, that's good. We all know look after your parents. But because somebody said it, suddenly it gains such traction and momentum because the norm out there is the famous is more infamous. The famous is more infamous. For the remaining part of that journey, which was three hours, I fell off to sleep. The non-Muslim brother was on YouTube listening to my lectures. I'm in the house of Allah. We've got to stand tall. We've got to conduct ourselves with respect. We've got to exhibit the teachings correctly. So what did the Prophet ﷺ say? Just don't harm anyone. This is charity. Yes. Hafiz ibn Hajar writes, You'll only be rewarded 
for restraining from wrong provided it's coupled with active intention and it's just not in a neutral context so when you came to the masjid and you just casually parked and you parked in your parking bay good luck no reward no sin but if you consciously came and you said no i'm making the exit here narrow somebody that might be coming out on a walker or wheelchair this might become difficult for him as much as this is a parking bay let me go there let me be sensitive i think kids are playing here probably i'm going to be encroaching on their space let me accommodate that all your potential accommodations because of which you moved your car will be incorporated in your reward that's the richness of deen anyway the verse i recited before you islam is a religion that wants to live with respect and respect others for what they they believe in our core of our deen is what? Tawheed, monotheism. Right? That's the essence of our deen. Yet categorically Allah says in the Quran, do not revile, do not verbally abuse, do not insult the gods of others. Don't do that. Allah, they will retort and insult Allah. So you, O Muslim, don't insult anyone's God. We as Muslims, our deen is, we, Allah forbid, if a person was to make a blasphemous comment against any Nabi, we will take uh, exception to it. Because our deen is to respect, honor, and revere every prophet. Can you imagine how low the human race can stoop if people can mock and scoff at the Nabi? Just, just process your thoughts to say, where, where's the fabric of society? Where's the makeup of our community? If people can lose respect and honor and dignity, we all can agree. Uh, that the, the galaxy of prophets were the noblest of Allah's creation. Whatever denomination, faith, whatever. But you do agree, I do agree that out of the entire creation, the prophets were the best. But today, unfortunately, even the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam were not spared. That is why under this ayah, وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى ثُمَّ جِتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَدَى in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the mistake of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. He erred. He erred. And the two terminologies used by Allah, ya Asa and Ghawa, in Arabic context are fairly strong worded. Of course, they have multiple meanings and in the context of the Nabi, they need to be applied in its euphemistic uh, context. Right? It's, it's academic language and I, I don't want to be going into all of this here. But under this here, it is written in Ahkamul Quran. Right? Uh, that Islam teaches us because there's, there's, there's no limits today. Freedom of speech, speak your mind, speak your thoughts, say whatever it is. So, you know, one, one pious person said, don't get yourself embroiled in three arguments. The arguments of your parents, the arguments of scholars, and the arguments or the differences rather of Sahaba. Don't get into that. You, you pray for your parents' unity and reconciliation. Don't, don't uh, embroil yourself in that feud. The Sahaba were great people and Allah had given them the declaration of Jannah. Don't go and tarnish yourself. Don't go and tarnish yourself when Allah has forgiven them. So I'm saying Islam is a religion. The, the whole reason why interest is forbidden. Why is interest forbidden? Because it's a system of exploitation. Islam teaches you don't exploit and don't be exploited. Respect others and have a system that allows for others to respect you. 
So when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, we all know the incident when he came to Bayt al-Maqdis and then he was touring and then he went into the church and then he, it was the time of Salah and they told Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, please pray here in our church. You are the Fatih, you are the conqueror, you can offer your prayers here. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, I don't want to pray here because it might be potential reason of controversy. The Muslims might argue in the years to come, our Amin had prayed here, so this is our land, and that might feed a potential controversy. So respecting that, I will go out and pray. Subhanallah. This is clearly recorded, documented. And this is exactly what Mendy is saying. As Muslims, we respect, we support, give us the same honor, respect, and dignity. La barara wa la dharar. The teachings of Islam is don't inflict harm on anyone. La tablimuna wa la tudlamun. Don't oppress and don't be on the receiving end of oppression. So I think it is important in this month of sabr and patience that we uh, become more conscious of our deen. We are living in a world where so much is thrown out, so much is indoctrinated, and often if a person's faith is not anchored and then people try to rev him up or people try to put him in an awkward spot he unfortunately can succumb can buckle and can can mellow down in his faith may allah protect us so here's a reflection from the quran allah says that the devil is on the earth and in the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's here to uh, test us. So there's the force of good and evil. Because today the mind is, uh, you see, the, the, the human intellect is important. It's a vehicle to understanding. But it needs to be limited, controlled, regulated, legislated. If it's an unbridled horse, then there's no end to it. This human mind also, if you want to run your logic and not cut off at any point, and you want to challenge divinity, you want to challenge at any point, you just want to keep on interrogating as if it's your domain and your right, then such person, their knowledge has failed them in the comprehension of the latter life. You've got to submit to divine teachings. You cannot ex go into them. There's an example of one of the great scholars gave so profound. He said that the Prophet ﷺ told us about the punishment in the grave. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about the questioning in Akhira. It's like a fisherman who casts his rod. And then just when the fish is about to bite, uh, the duck comes there. The duck says, listen, I'm in water, I'm out of water. This thing looks rosy. There's the bait that's dangling there. Don't bite at the bait of temptation until you don't know what is the hook beneath it. Don't bite at the bait of temptation because there's the baits of temptation that are just thrown out every day and everybody's just biting. But hang on, there's, there's, there's a hook beneath that bait. Are you just going to fall prey for this here? And the Prophet ﷺ said before Qiyamah, this will be one of the signs that the fitnas will present itself. If you just peep in, it will swallow you. May Allah save us. So something pops up on your screen and curiosity intrigues you and then you hooked. So now you cast the rod and you're about to bite on and then the duck comes to the fish with hang on. It's metaphorical, but it's, it's profound in terms of comprehending the analogy. And he says, don't bite on here. If you eat here, you might enjoy that particular piece of meat and whatever, but soon you'll be rolled up. And as soon as you'll be rolled up, you'll be taken out. Within seconds, minutes, you'll die. This guy will drop you in his trunk and off he goes. So I'm, I'm out of the water, I'm in the water, I'm back and forth. You're only in the water. The duck is having a word with the fish. And then this guy takes you home. Believe it or not, he chops you up, cuts you in pieces. And then they roast you, they cook you on burning hot oil, on hot flame. And then they spice you up. And then after that, there's this whole family with 30 odd teeth. They grind you to pieces. So the fish tells the duck, okay, appreciate it. Give me a moment. I just want to do my round and do my homework. So the fish then does a swim in the water and comes back. And says, I see no rod, I see no man, I see no car, I see no oil, I see no spice. But hang on, this is happening outside the water, you're trying to find it in the water. 
My Nabi and your Nabi and our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, don't do this. When you go in the grave, لَوْلَا أَلَّا تَدَافَنُوا لَوْلَا أَلَّا تَدَافَنُوا لَدَعُوتُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُسْمِعَكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ It's just the fear that you'll stop bearing your disease. Otherwise, I was on the verge of asking Allah to unveil the punishment of the grave so you see it with your eye. But I held back because you won't have the courage to lower anyone down. إِنَّهُ مَا يُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ بَلَا إِنَّهُ كَبِيرٍ Oh, these two people are having a severe punishment. And it, the crime wasn't even severe. Actually, it is severe, but they didn't consider it severe. That's the hadith. This one used to carry tales. نقل الكلام على سبيل الفساد, as we say. To carry a story with the evil, with the intention of corruption. And the other one was negligent with regards to urine. Negligent with regards to urine. We, 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 our deen is a very clean religion. All these people of Kuba, just call them, Allah praise them, man. فيه رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا. Allah praise these people of Kuba. Go ask them. So Nabi Sassim said, Allah has revealed this verse praising you people. What's so amazing about your purity? He said, Oh, of Allah, we're just humble people. No, no, Allah has praised you. نُتْبِعُ الْأَحْجَارَ الْمَا We combine with two forms of purity. We would use a lump of sand, which would absorb the impurity, and then followed by water. Nabi Sallallahu said, this is it. Allah has praised you for it. If it wasn't for the fact that you would stop burying your disease, I would have asked Allah to unveil it to you. The Nabi of Allah, the Quran said, we're talking of interest. الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَى لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسْءِ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِثْلُ الرِّبَى وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الرِّبَى الذين يأكلون الربا those who consume interest لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه الشيطان من المس they will stand up from the grave like someone that has been struck by a demon look at this guy what's that's how it will be they will stand up wobbling they won't be in the right state they won't have the balance they won't have the composure that's besides what's coming beyond Now I'm trying to say, no, I went into the grave. It just looks like a regular hole there. Nothing much. Okay, then bite. Bite on porn. Bite on interest. Bite on the haram. And doubt the words of my Nabi and your Nabi. And then, Ab to gabra ke ye kehte hai ke mar jayenge Mar ke bhi chen na paaya to ki dar jayenge Ab to gabra ke ye kehte hai ke mar jayenge Mar ke bhi chen na paaya to ki dar jayenge Kar ke dek نہ مان لیا تو مر کے دیکھ کر کے دیکھ نہ مانا تو مر کے دیکھ اوکے the point I was saying to you is that Islam is a religion that teaches us that we want to live with respect practice our deen Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضی اللہ عنہ was the first person who said folks I have the courage to go in the Kaaba and read the Quran when he went in the Kaaba to read the Quran, they came on him and they beated him so severely. This was the hostility. Fatima radiallahu comes and she was a young girl. That was the time when the likes of Abu Jahl and others had placed the intestines of the camel on the back of the Prophet And can you imagine Fatima whose dear beloved daughter came and she said, Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh my father, curse these people. That they denied. Abu Jahl in his, in his Islamophobic and blasphemous comments was so hostile and so arrogant that he said the next time Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will prostrate La ata'anna ra'sa Read the narration of Ibn Kathir. And unfortunately, you still find people throwing out that kind of behavior. If Muhammad goes and prostrates, I'm going to crush his leg. Who are you? And where are you going to crush? Allah said, you are in my protection, O Muhammad So the Prophet went into sajda. He went into sajda, right? And... Uh, 
Abu Jahab then came. He came forward to prevent the Prophet ﷺ from prostrating. And as he came forward, suddenly he just started retreating. So people said to him, what happened? He said, Baini wa bainahu khandaq min nar. Read the narration in Surah Iqra. That's the context of the ayah. When I got there, I seen flames. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if he had to come any closer, the angels would have separated his entire anatomy. So what does Allah say in the Quran? Have you seen the audacity of this person who prevents someone from prostrating? You denied the right to, to bow. May Allah grant us true sajda. May Allah grant us the sweetness of sajda. Tera sajda kahi kafir na bana de tujko e iqbal. Tu jukta kahi aur hai, sochta kahi aur hai. Tera sajda kahi kafir na kar de tujko e iqbal. Tu jukta kahi aur hai, sochta kahi aur hai. Let it not be that your prostration makes you lose the spirit of your faith because you bow in one ear but your thoughts are roaming elsewhere. May Allah grant us that wholesome prostration. We, we, Wallahi, when you get that sajda, enjoy it. When you get that sajda, enjoy it. You know what's that feeling? Sometimes we all enjoy it, but it just doesn't last too long. You're in there and then you want to prolong it more. And then you want to prolong it more. They say, Revealing is healing. Crying is cathartic. When you, when you vent, you express, you just get that inner satisfaction. When you're in sajda, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ The closest the servant to his creator is in prostration. Because you, you, you're riveted. You, you, you're just getting that inner ecstasy and euphoria, spiritual. May Allah bless us with that. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يَنْهَا عَبْدًا إِذَا صَلَّى أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْهُدَى أَوْ أَمَرَ بِالتَّقْوَى كَلَّا لَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهِ لَنَسْفَعًا بِالنَّاسِيَةِ So what did he say? I'm going to call my group. I'm going to call my friends. So Allah said, فَلْيَدْعُ نَادِيَةِ Wow. فَلْيَدْعُ نَادِيَةِ سَنَدْعُ الزَّبَانِيَةِ Okay, call your cronies. We're dispatching our angels. Call your cronies. We're dispatching our angels. Okay. So before Brother Abdullah comes and makes the appeal, and I'm saying again, Islam is saying, love with respect, love with harmony, love with harmony. Islam teaches us to respect. You can have a government ruling document, enacted, legislated, that tells you how to believe, behave with your partner, how to behave with your, with your neighbor. Is there any religion that governs how you behave with someone occupying a seat next to you for one moment? Well, Islam does. You're in a common queue, you're standing in an aisle, you are in a coach, you are in a flight. Allah in the Quran governs, regulates and legislates how I have to behave with someone standing next to me regardless of his color, creed, nationality or ethnicity. So what does Allah say? وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَاعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And then there's up for it. So be kind to this one, be kind. And be kind and good, respectful, polite, courteous and cordial, civil and dignified to anyone sitting next to you. That's the verse of the Quran. I'm not, you can check my references. Not a thumbs up. That's the beauty of our deen. And that's what we're advocating. And that's what we're calling. We, we show respect. Don't, don't abuse. The, our whole deen is tawheed. But the Quran says, don't, don't abuse. Don't insult anyone's gods. Yes. The scholars say under the commentary of the ayah, you can intellectually stimulate someone. Come, let's have an intellectual discussion. Afala yaroon. Have you pondered over what you worship? Did you process? Did you comprehend? Did you apply your mind? So we can engage. But don't mock. Don't scoff. Don't laugh. Because that's counterproductive. Don't laugh at any person. But yes, unfortunately, we live in a world where people are denied the right to pray. Where people are denied. Huh? When, when Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu 
had ended an agreement with some non-Muslims. And then he deployed a strategy. And this is referenced in the Quran. He deployed a strategy. And then the, the, the contract was expiring last night. He had posted his armies on the borders and the peripheries and the boundaries. And as soon as it, it expired, he then made inroads into the camps. And because it was like, you know, the turn of 12 and the next day had set in and the former contract had expired and now there was no contract in place. So it was kind of an element of ambush and uncertainty. And the strategy proved to be very effective and he started gaining grounds and, 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 and towns and cities started falling. Amr radiallahu anhu came and he said, O oh, Muawiyah, wafa'un, wafa'un, wafa'un. Allah's Nabi taught us loyalty. If you are in contract and an agreement and, and, and um, a document and a pact with any person and it ends, you cannot take action till you don't remind them that the pact has formally ended so that they can take their necessary cover and protection. Sayyidina Muawiyah returns the cities that had fallen to his victory. I don't like to use the analogy, but if you bowl someone and then they say it's a no-ball. Because the wicket has fallen and you, you know, you're in your glory and you're turning around and you're flipping the bat and you're jumping and oh, it's a breakthrough and it's a make or break. And then suddenly to say it was an overstep or whatever, or you know, whatever it is. One simple game and people will fight and argue and then the camera and the micro and then review and then the second empire and the third view. And Sayyidina Muawiyah said, no, 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 no. Okay. That's Islam. Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and his son, Ali bin Makkah, they apprehended in, in Ramadan. They apprehended by Abu Sufyan. And then Abu Sufyan said, where are you going? He said, no, we're going to Medina. He said, you're going to join the Muslims against us. He said, no, no, we won't join the Muslims. Just leave us. So then he left them. And then when they got to Medina, the Muslims were marching from Medina, 125 kilometers, Badr, 17th of Ramadan. And Abu um, Huzaifa radiallahu said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, can we join you? He said, yeah, join us. And there was a shortage of number. And he said, but I just need to tell you, when we left Mecca, Abu Jahl intercepted us. And then he wouldn't release us because he said, we're going to become reinforcement. So I told him, we're not going to become reinforcement. I told him, no, no, we're just going. So I just appeased him, but we need to join you. The Prophet said, Nafi bi uhudihim. No, no, you gave your word to Abu Jahl that you will not join us. As much as we're short of numbers, we will honor our word given to him. You cannot join us. Hudayfa bin Yaman is known as the confidant of the Prophet of Allah. He has a thousand accolades, but he hasn't, doesn't wear the cap of a Badri. He doesn't wear the virtue of being a veteran of Badr because of a word and a contract he made with Abu Jahl, a non-Muslim. I'm saying Islam is a beautiful religion. Let's stand up. Let's put an end to Islamophobia. Let's dispel the myth. Let's stand tall with our character, with our dignity, with the manner in which we exhibit our Islam, the manner in which we talk, the manner in which we behave, uh, so that we can end this hostility, make the world a better place. Mankind must end war, otherwise war will end mankind. That's the world we're living in. It's just going for one another's throat. There's no more sanity, no more serenity. The Prophet said before Qiyamah, it will be haraj, haraj. There will be just massacre and bloodshed. So we need to have the conviction of the beauty of our Islam uh, without being condescending to anyone, but holding the value of deen with great respect, honor, and dignity. As we can coexist with others, we expect the same from others. Inshallah, Brother Abdullah will come forward. He'll make the appeal so that my sister today can can wear her hijab at university my brother can have a place to pray and i can be given my respect which i'm entitled to both by my religion primarily and even by the legal constitution that it allows for that space for religious uh, practice etc in a harmonious way let, let, let us display this let us exhibit this and let us support this i'll leave you with this message here sayyidina isa said man ansari ilallah Man ansa, who's going to help me to Allah? Fihi jawazul istinsar min ahli din din We learn from this that a Nabi asked his people, I need your help. I need your help to advance the cause. So the same appeal has been made and I trust that this blessed time, it's Jummah, it's Ramadan, it's the time of Asr. 
You cannot ask for a more blessed, sacred, and momentous time. Let us focus and we'll conclude with dua and let us respond and, and donate generously. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن الأبرار لفي نعيم وإن الفجار لفي جحيم يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله والسماء ذات الرجع والأرض ذات الصدع إنه لقول فصل وما هو بالهزل إنهم يكيدون كيدا وأكيد كيدا فمهل الكافرين أمهلهم رويدا